ocelot poop. This is an ocelot trail, and this would be a nice place for an ocelot to poo with a view. But I can tell this is from an ocelot. Check this out. Because it's got all kinds of fur in it and crushed up pieces of bone right there from an agouti, because that's what an ocelot likes to eat. And basically, the moral of the story is what comes in, comes out. Jonas, yeah? I think I found the mother load. The mother load, a whole load of science there. Wow. There's two reasons why you wouldn't want to step in this, and the first one being the smell on your shoes, of course. The other is, even though the animal's no longer here, it left this whole pile of information about its life. It may not be as glamorous as studying the creatures themselves, but the science of studying animal scat allows researchers to find all kinds of information about them and animals' health that they have a really hard time finding using regular field techniques. The challenge of being a scat scientist is twofold. The first thing is finding the scat in the wild, and the second is unlocking the mysteries of the animal that left it behind. I think you should hold your nose, guys, because we're about to dig into the world of animal scat. This guy has eaten a lot of hair. This is a deer. No, definitely a wolf, I think, eating the deer. Oh, definitely. Whoa. Ever wonder why you feel so empty inside? Why the stars don't shine bright in the night? Ever wonder why you want to See what we can find. See if we can find some good scat to dig into. Well. As you can see, we've got a few to choose from. I'll tell you what, let's go right here. Here's one. It's a big one. Yeah, now look at the size of this. First of all, the size is going to tell us it's a rather big um, bear that did this. A big bear? Yes, of course, by the it's size. A, there's a lot of poop there. And now see the dark color? That's a good natural scat. And see the bright colored seed right there? Right now there's natural, there's wild strawberries. Blooming. Oh. And in fact, you'll see a little bit part of an ant right here. See the ant body? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, there's an ants. So right ants. now they're eating ants. They're eating some larvae. Um, and see how fibrous it is? That shows that all the vegetation they're eating. See all the fiber here? And you're yeah. seeing more ants. See, here's another ant. Could you, could you by looking at this scat, almost mm -hmm. tell like what season it is kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. Um, you could buy the seed early summer. Oh yeah, here's our oh. scat maker. In fact, this is a mama bear coming in. Okay, let's dig deeper into the mysteries of scat detection here in Africa with researcher Kathleen Gobush and the biggest scat makers on earth. Well, the questions I've asked um, of an elephant population that was heavily poached for its ivory, I wanted to know, okay, what are the consequences of that heavy poaching? How is the population doing today? Once you remove relatives from those families because you've killed them, does that have an effect on the survivors? And so the first thing I did was extract DNA from the dung and I DNA fingerprinted um, the individuals in the family to see how related they were. So then you run uh, statistics on it to help determine your results? Yeah, there's a couple so. programs. One of them is called Kinship, and it lets you get an R value, a relatedness value, um, for every um, two fingerprints between, you know, two individuals, so that 10 loci, that genotype. And you compare the two genotypes and get an R value. Right. And so everyone gets an R value. Every pair gets an R value. And I got that all from the dung. And then the second question, I looked at is who was pregnant or not. So most adult females, you'd expect them to either have a baby with them or you know, going to have one soon, be pregnant. 
And so we got hormones from the dung, and they're the same hormones that are in us because they're conserved throughout mammalian species. And so we just measured those hormones in the same way they measure it to do a pregnancy test for a human. And so we're able to get that from the dung. For example, if a female has um, 1,000 nanograms per gram of progesterone in her sample, she's likely pregnant. So that's what I'm looking for. So it all reduces from the pile of dung into a fixed number for the animal. All elephants will have a certain amount of cortisol because we all need it, we all have it, us humans too, and it's what helps us get up, wake up in the morning, it's what uh, fuels you. But also when an animal's particularly stressed, and like for example if you see an animal flee or run away scared, they're probably having high stress hormone. And so um, we wanted to see too if that was higher in the elephants who are missing family members. And as populations of, for example, endangered species are dwindling more and more, it's becoming more important to really look at the exact individuals and ask how each one of them are doing and are they going to be able to contribute to the next generation or are they so compromised, are they not doing well, are they not healthy that they're not going to be able to have babies and, and help their own population grow into the future. And you're finding all those answers just by studying dung. Yeah, basically. And um, with the elephants we also looked at a lot of behavior and so um, how they interact with each other. But dung is definitely one important piece of the puzzle to get, get that picture. As you've seen, scientists are making new discoveries using scat detection, helping wild species all over the planet. Maybe you can help by becoming a scat researcher. I mean, the tools are scattered all throughout nature. We've definitely learned today that dung beetles aren't the only ones who make their living messing around with scat all day. <laughs> That's good, yeah. But, as always, we encourage you to never stop exploring your world. <laughs>